in Genesis 37 that Reuben returned to the pit and behold, Joseph was not in the pit. So what happens? He goes back to the pit, which is like the tomb, right? And Reuben was like, oh my gosh, he's not here. What are we going to do? What, what am I going to do about this? So what did he do? He, so he tore his garments, tore his clothing, right? Now, what is that a picture of? Well, Caiaphas also tore his clothing, and the religious leaders were coming up with a plan to what? To make it look like Jesus did not rise from the dead. They were very concerned about that. And so what did they tell those Roman soldiers? to say that uh, they came and they took the body away. Well, that's what we're seeing in the story of Joseph. This is amazing that all of this is in there and it's all weaved together by God. This is so amazing. So let's go back. So he tore his clothing, his garments. And then it says, he returned to his brothers and said, the boy is not there. As for me, where am I to go? So he's, Reuben's obviously very concerned about the big I here himself, right? And so it continues, so they took Joseph's tunic, slaughtered a male goat, and what did they do? They dipped the tunic in the blood. They dipped the tunic in the blood. What does that speak of? Jesus is also described as wearing a long tunic down to his ankles, and it too, my friend, is dipped in blood. Watch this. Let's go to Revelation chapter 19. This is the description of Jesus when he comes back in his glory with the 144,000 Jewish believers, from 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes. And here's where we see, he says, he is clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. A robe dipped in blood? Didn't we just see that in Joseph's story? And they, what did they do? They dipped a tunic in blood. Whoa. And then here in Revelation 19, it says, his robe was dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Now, I'll give you a little sneak peek into our future episode. The Pharaoh, he who sits on the throne after Joseph is raised up out of that place of the condemned, right? Which speaks of Jesus in Revelation standing before the throne. Well, he's given a new name, Zafnaf Paneach, which means the word or God speaks and he lives. In other words, the word of God. Isn't that amazing? That's what we see right here in, in Joseph's story. He gets a new name from he who sat on the throne. God speaks and he lives. This is amazing. But we see it here in Joseph's story too, because he wasn't in the tomb or the, the cistern, right? The same thing. It was empty and Reuben tore his clothing and then they came up with a plan where they dipped his robe in blood. Wow. <laughs> this is so amazing that God put all this together. So let's get more into Genesis 37. And they sent the multicolored tunic and they brought it to their father. And then it says that we found, they said, we found this. Please examine it to see whether it is your son's tunic or not. So they're telling Israel, their father, whose name is Israel, they're saying, examine this tunic. Is this from your dead son, right? Is this your son's tunic is what they're asking. They're saying, examine it. Well, I thought it would be interesting <laughs> to look at this because there's been a lot on what is called the Shroud of Turin, the, the actual cloth, they say, that Jesus was buried in. He was wrapped in when, they, when Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus put him in that tomb, Joseph's tomb, right? The tomb that was not defiled by any dead man. And it says that he wrapped him in cloth. Well, they believe that 
And I think that a lot, even a lot of secular scientists, a lot of atheists have studied this, and they're saying this is legit. From that time period, they cannot explain how this image is on it and how this image even has blood here on right where the thorn, the crown of thorns would have been. There's blood on the where the hands are. There's blood in these places he's been whipped and scourged. This is none other, I believe, than Jesus' cloth. At first, I was a critic of this. I'm like, oh, yeah, right. The Catholic Church sees Mary and trees and all these different things in the clouds. Here's this relic they're saying they have the actual image of Jesus on this this, uh, cloth that he was buried in. But the scientists and the experts have all agreed that it is legit. It is legit, you guys. This is amazing. So let's go back to that scripture, right? So... The scripture said this. What did it? What did they tell the father, their father Yaakov, or Jacob, or actually Israel? What did they tell Israel? Examine it. This this robe that was dipped in blood. Examine it to see whether it is not your son's tunic or not. So here is the shroud of Turin. This is like an X-ray image of it, and they found that there was whip marks. There was blood, actual blood right here. And they think they did a study of the blood, and they know it comes from, it's, it's Jewish blood. And it's right here where the thorn of crowns would have been. This is, they say that it was like this, this hot uh, light made this image on the cloth. They can't explain it. It's almost like when Jesus was raised from the dead, that this, his image was burned into this, like a photograph and then here's the tail, the, the backside of that cloth, and they could see whip marks all up and down his body and traces of blood there as well. This is amazing. And what did they tell Israel? They said, examine it, the brothers of Joseph, right, to see whether it is your son's tunic. Yes, it is your son's tunic, God's son, Jesus. Here's some more images. This is where the blood was that they found. And this has been photo color enhanced to show what Yeshua may have actually looked like. You may be looking at the image of Jesus' face right there. This one doesn't work quite as well because the, the white is actually his dark hair. So this would be more like what he would look like. And then here you see an image uh, of some of the, an artist did it of off of the Shroud of Turin, which may have been what Yeshua, what Jesus actually looked like. Amazing stuff, right? All right, let's continue in Genesis 37. And then he examined it, Israel examined it, and said, it is my son's tunic. Kind of like today, my friends, right? Today, the scientists and the, the Jewish, even scientists that are, don't believe in Jesus are saying that this, in fact, they believe was, it could have easily been Jesus Christ, this shroud of Turin, this tunic, so to speak, with blood on it. Wow. <laughs> this is stuff from our time, guys. And then what did they say? This is the lie that they told Israel, a vicious animal uh, had devoured him, and, is, and uh, Israel said that a vicious animal has devoured him. So Joseph has surely been torn to pieces, Israel said. A vicious animal has devoured him. Joseph has surely been torn to pieces. There it is again. <laughs> I made a mistake on that. So scraps from, from Psalm 22 have been found in Israel, you guys. Check this out. Scraps from a scroll containing some of the Psalms were discovered at Nakal Hevar. And one scrap contained a line from Psalm 22, verse 16. This is the controversial verse, right? The word clearly ended in Vav and not in Yod and was therefore a third-person plural verb. What does that mean? They dug or pierced my hands and my feet. That is what the original said. That was the oldest manuscript that has been found and they pierced or bore through my hands and my feet, not the other, like a lion that that has, has been the lie for many years now. That is a lie that was told to Israel and the world. So since this scrap they found, okay, is dated in accordance with the style of letters used to 50 to 68 common era, or you could say AD, 
It is almost 1,000 years earlier, okay? 1,000 years earlier than the Aleppo Codex. What does that mean? That means the Masoretic text, you guys, that was written around 1,000 BC or translated around 1,000, not BC, but AD. So the earliest manuscript of the Masoretic text, and it shows that at, in at least one of the earliest Hebrew traditions of Psalm 22, the word is not like a lion or like a vicious animal like we see in Joseph's story that is torn Joseph, or you could say torn Jesus to pieces. No, it's not like a lion, but they dug or they pierced my hands and my feet. Wow. <laughs> so amazing. And then Genesis 37 continues. So Jacob tore his clothes and he put on sackcloth, the sackcloth undergarment over his waist, and he mourned for his son many days. Many days he mourned. Poor Jacob. And then all his sons and all his daughters got up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. He And he said, Surely I will go down to Sheol in mourning for my son. So his father wept for him. Meanwhile, the Midianites sold him to Egypt to Potiphar, Pharaoh's officer, the captain of the guard. And in our next episode, we're going to look at what that means, this captain of the guard, because he is a picture, Potiphar is a picture of Pontius Pilate. That's a lot of peas. Potiphar, picture of Pontius Pilate. <laughs> but he is. And we're going to look at that in the next episode because he takes false uh, accusations from his wife. He's falsely accused, and he goes along with it, even though I believe, and you'll see it in this, that he knew the truth. He knew that that she was lying. And there was lies about Jesus too, right? And Pontius Pilate went along with it and sent him down to the place of the condemned or judged him to the place of the condemned. That's what happened to Jesus. Same thing with Joseph. This is amazing, you guys. I can't wait to get into this with you guys. I'm so excited about it. And episode four or uh, five, excuse me, the next one, part five of this Joseph series, it's actually a bigger series called How to Find Jesus in the Old Testament. Hit this playlist right here and you'll get all of them. You don't want to miss the previous chapters. There was one in Saul in uh, Genesis 22 about Isaac and his father Abraham going up the mountain, which is a huge picture of the cross. There's many other episodes. You don't want to miss them. Hit this playlist right here. Love you guys.